What's up guys, a TSA specialist and the Battle of Nordvik may be the worst attempt at a live event we've ever seen from a AAA franchise. Everyone, ready up. They go down! West and Russia are both being accused of fielding armed no-pats in an escalating fight over vital resources. Over the past few weeks, Battlefield 2042 hosted a new mid-season event titled The Battle of Nordvik, a three-week limited-time event that focused on the current season's map Spearhead and an assortment of game modes both new and old, while providing a range of new cosmetics, both free and paid. Now, I have a lot of thoughts about the Battle of Nordvik, as events like this are really at the backbone of modern live service gaming, and Battlefield has so much potential and ability to learn from its peers and outperform them in almost every way, something I'd like to speak about in another video. However, DICE has marketed this as a dark spec ops narrative event, yet aside from the cosmetics has really dropped the ball in terms of gameplay, content, and narrative and again has done the bare minimum possible with a 700 person AAA studio. A studio that has been approved for a second year of content with the game, yet shows zero care to go above and beyond, even in the most basic of ways. So for this review, I want to break down the event by the good, the bad, and the ugly, so hit subscribe and let's jump into it. Off the bat, let's talk about the good. And a huge positive for me was this game's step towards more gritty, interesting, yet down-to-earth cosmetics. There's been a lot of debate around what makes a good cosmetic in Battlefield, and how far is too far. For me personally, I think the real world is full of interesting, badass, and realistic cosmetics that are based on real armed forces, which would be right at home in this franchise. I think DICE just needs to look harder. That being said, this event has featured some of my favorite cosmetics and has done a better job at having good items presented as in-game rewards. The dark, near-future Spec Ops tone is a really good fit for this game's narrative and DICE has done a good job catering to the majority of characters even if some get better treatment than others. But hey, Irish finally got a good cosmetic, so that's a win for me. Now, aside from cosmetics, their quantity, and their ability to be earned in-game, the Battle of Nordvik's presentation and art direction are really good. I like seeing the main menu get some new artwork, even though I believe they need to do more in that area. And when you look over all the promotional work, cosmetics, menu art, and trailers, the package is rather compelling and badass. It really makes me wish that the game leaned more into that spec ops part of the narrative, with ranked small team modes, more urban maps, and a campaign that focused on our characters, each with their own backstory. Also, it's worth mentioning that Battlefield 2042's trailers continue to get better, and this was just the latest in a masterclass in editing and artistic direction. Now finally, the concept for the Battle of Nordvik event was just fine. Three weeks, three experiences, and earnable items with a focus on Season 2 content. Moving forward, I think events like this make sense and can help reinvest players into the content that the devs have already produced. However, that's about where the good news ends. Now for the bad. And if you'd like another perspective on the Battle of Nordvik, check out Enders on YouTube. He touched on the gameplay and content side of the event, and does a good job adding commentary to how this event was a failure. 
But for me, I have a lot of problems here, some worse than others, but many of them come back to the idea of this event just being lazy. For me, a narrative mid-season event should feel special. This should be a moment where DICE can break out of their seasonal cadence and get creative. Any wacky ideas, interesting narrative beats, or new systems they'd like to try can be tested during the event and thrown away later. However, the Battle of Nordvik is somehow even more underwhelming than the game's core multiplayer. In all honesty, aside from the new menu artwork and three new cosmetics per week, these events are just glorified portal servers. No new audio introducing us to the narrative of the weekly game mode, no in-game trailers or narrative beats, no connection to the wider world or characters of Battlefield, and game modes that have clearly been created in Portal with no squad screen, no end of round features, and no opening in-game cutscene. In most modes, the player is just dropped into a random, lifeless server, playing a repetitive mode on the same map week after week, with even less theatrics than the core multiplayer. And while I understand the end of round highlights and an intro cutscene don't improve the gameplay, this is the one time they make sense to have, where the dev team could get creative, add in audio at the beginning of the game, and flex the new cosmetics in front of their players. One way to stop this war, and that's to get in the middle of it. Put a call out to any notepad who will listen. 36 hours to go. Get ready to fight! The whole event just feels lifeless, disconnected, and lazy, especially when compared to a game like Destiny or Warzone, which provide new animated narrative cutscenes every few weeks, totally reskin their social hub or menus during Christmas, Halloween, and other limited time events, and while featuring whole new gameplay systems and mechanics. DICE has over 700 employees, with EA swearing that they're all busy on Battlefield 2042, but it really appears that that's either far from the truth the team is having huge technical issues, or they're just the most underwhelming creative team in gaming today. Why not a cutscene each week introducing some narrative? Why not a new environment for our player to stand in at the main menu? Why not new audio that tells the player why they're fighting for Nordvik? Why not a truly new gameplay experience or gameplay system? DICE has really created an entire three-week event around modes anyone could have hosted in Portal or that are just slight deviations from what already exists in the core multiplayer, instead of creating something new or bringing back a fan-favorite narrative mode like Operations. A year into this live service and we've had two events, each week getting sadder and lazier than the one before it. Now, at this point we have a basic event with good cosmetics and minimal effort. An event that demands you grind the same map for three weeks straight with zero larger narrative implications, minimal changes to the player experience, and a strange reward system that's based on ribbons. And to top it all off, we have one of the worst game modes in Battlefield history. Week 2's game mode Retribution is perhaps one of the greatest examples of DICE not playing their game or understanding what makes a good mode in Battlefield. They describe the mode with plenty of buzzwords, saying it's a combination of rush and breakthrough with teams of 16 and a range of vehicles. In my eyes, it's front lines with all of the front lines parts taken out and replaced with breakthrough. Essentially, it's a single objective breakthrough game mode where 16 players get attack vehicles and need to capture one objective per sector to advance and upon the final sector need to arm multiple MCOM locations to win the game. However, the opposing team gets support vehicles like the MAV and have nearly full range the map at all times because the play area is essentially 64 player breakthrough but without kill boundaries in the spawns, one objective per sector and only 32 players in total. All in all, Retribution is a slow, boring mess with little in the way of player options or balance. It's like someone who played Battlefield for the first time and then tried to explain the entire game in one sentence. 
big map, vehicles, helicopters, MCOMs, breakthrough objectives, and so on. All spread across an unforgivingly open map, where players can run behind each other's spawns and then bunch up on a singular exposed objective, all at the same time to only be attacked by a helicopter. There's nothing tactical about this mode, nor does it commit to the large-scale sandbox that real modes like Breakthrough and Conquest balance across multiple objectives. It's messy, barren, frustrating, and mismatched, trying to appeal to small team tactical players while instead putting them all in an open field with an attack chopper. Now while Retribution is terrible, other modes like Conquest Assault and Breakthrough Chaos have made a return. And while Conquest Assault is pretty boring, Breakthrough Chaos really shows everything wrong with putting 128 players into an open field. The Breakthrough servers are laggy for many, and attacking in this mode is horrible. It's a meat grinder of dozens and dozens of players, and at best becomes an XP farm for the defenders. Again, on the same map. The gameplay offerings of this event, an event a year in the making, are horrible. It does as little as possible to feel like Battlefield, invoke its sandbox, or add anything new to the gameplay experience. At best, it's a combination of fresh modes that are here for a few weeks to hand out good-looking free cosmetics, and at worst, it's a repetitive, poorly crafted, and lazy attempt to change the player experience, where players are forced to grind a singular new piece of content in the form of Spearhead, playing three game types that range from boring to irritating. All in all, it added some new good content in the form of cosmetics, but did so in the most boring way possible. A grindy, three-week event, single map playlist that's designed to create FOMO and get players to purchase a limited time cosmetics while the dev team takes their holiday break. But guys, tell me what you think and drop your comments below. Like I said, I want to talk about Battlefield's live events in another video, so stay tuned and subscribe, and as always, Thank you guys for watching.